So Danny and I first started talking about this play, I guess probably late in the summer. Um, and it became clear to us right away, it's like we have to find the right room. You know, this play takes place in a room, but it has to be the right room. Um, because rooms tell stories and you know the, the particular sort of rehearsal room that this play takes place in tells us you know who Thomas is, what kind of director he is, what kind of artist he is, what kind of play they're trying to, to produce here. So I'm sort of like wow there's a space in Philadelphia that's very similar to all of these spaces. It's a big room you know with three columns, it has uh, theater seats on stage right, or these like little, you know, the idea is that they may do sort of stage readings or um, small performances in here. We were looking for a room that felt really real and really authentic, that then could give way to a sort of a supernatural thing. So we're actually, for the most part, replicating that room on your stage. We're just gonna set up the room and, and play around in it and see, see where we get. We don't we don't have any sort of preconceived notions of this moment takes place there and that one takes place there. It's just, it's sort of a playground for them. And, um, and it felt right to us to just recreate a space with all its um, idiosyncrasies. And it, it gives Darren some nice stuff to play with in terms of what's there and sound and creating sort of the landscape of the place. And it gives ML a lot of room for, um, for lighting it, so we're, we're really excited about this this room. And speaking of lighting, uh, you know, one thing that you'll notice if, if you peek closely is that um, the ceiling of the set is equipped with lots of theatrical instrumentation, as well as fluorescent lights, uh, clip lights. So there's a variety of practical lighting options um, that can be affected primarily by by the two performers. Yeah. Cool. Great. Great. Thank you, guys. Thank, Thank you so much.